To start, I'm going to consider what the reciprocal function would look like. That would be y equals negative 4 sine 3 times x minus pi over 2 plus 1. I'm going to write my Q list down, which is going to be A, B, P, I, D, X sub 1, X sub 2, X sub 3, X sub 4, and X sub 5. A is for amplitude. It's the absolute value of the coefficient which precedes the trig function. In this case, it's 4. B is the coefficient that precedes the x. In this case, it's 3. The formula for period is 2 pi over b. More specifically for this problem, it's 2 pi over 3. The increment is going to be the period divided by 4 or the period times 1 fourth. So if I do 1 fourth of the period, 2 pi over 3, I end up getting 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6. The d value is the number at the very, very end. In this case, it's plus 1. And that stands for the midline. To find the first key point in a cosecant graph, I set the, the expression inside the parentheses equal to 0. So if I take x minus pi over 2 and I set it equal to 0, I simply get x equals pi over 2. So this graph is going to start at pi over 2. Sometimes this is called the horizontal displacement. So this is going to be displaced horizontally pi over 2 units to the right. To move from key point to key point, you're going to advance by the increment. The problem here is that we've got an uncommon denominator, a 2 and a 6. The common denominator would be a 6. So this is going to force me to rename this fraction to 3 pi over 6. Now if I advance by pi over 6, the next key point would be at 4 pi over 6, and the next one at 5 pi over 6, the next one at 6 pi over 6, and the last one at 7 pi over 6. Now we've got to take all this data and figure out the best place to draw this graph. I don't want to make it too smushed on the graph paper. I would like to spread it out so that it's easy to read. So I want to pick first off uh, a good scaling for my x-axis. I like to show both the x and the y axis, so I want to go from 0 up to 7. So what I think I'm going to do is use um, every two boxes to represent one tick mark. So I think I'm going to start over here like this. So this is going to be my y axis. And now I'm going to draw the x axis, and I think I'm going to do that right here. Okay, great. Okay, so if, uh, if every two boxes is going to be pi over 6, this would be 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this graph won't be too smushed if it starts at 3 and it ends at 7. I could have actually spread it out a little more, but I think this will be okay. Now I've got to do the same sort of consideration for the y scale. My midline is up at 1, but then from that I deviate 4 units in either direction. So I think I'm going to leave it one box to represent 1. So this is going to be 1, and then I go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I, here's 1, and I go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is going to be negative 3, this is going to be 1, and this is going to be 5. This is going to be pi over 6. This is going to be 2 pi over 6. This is going to be 3 pi over 6. 
This is going to be 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, and finally 7 pi over 6. I guess I should also label my axes. This is y, and I think this is x. So just ignore that line back there. All right, I'm going to start by actually drawing the sine graph. This is going to be my helper graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a midline here at 1, and I'm going to make it dotted. This is the midline for both the sine graph and for the cosecant graph. Okay, now in my class, the way that I remember sine is I do emimi, intercept, max, intercept, min, intercept. Except in this case, because of the negative in front, the whole graph is flipped upside down. So my first key point, which is at 3 pi over 6, is going to be an intercept. My second key point generally would be a max, but because it's flipped upside down, it's going to be a min. My third key point is going to be an intercept. My fourth key point is going to be a max. And my fifth key point, again, is going to be an intercept. And I'm going to connect these points with a dotted line. This graph here is what I call the helper graph. It is not the star of the show. The star of the show is the actual cosecant graph itself. When we looked at the basic shape of cosecant, we said that there are going to be vertical asymptotes at the first, third, and fifth key points. So I'm going to draw those in right now. Here's my first vertical asymptote. Here's my second vertical asymptote. And then here's my last vertical asymptote right here. Okay, now the basic shape of a cosecant graph looks like a smile followed by a frown, followed by a smile, followed by a frown, etc., etc. We're just looking at one cycle, so we're just going to see one smile and one frown. Because it's flipped over, we're going to start with the frown. And it's got a parabola-ish look to it. It's not an actual parabola, but it kind of looks like one. There's your frown, and now we'll do our smile over here. That's it. So this is the graph of y equals negative 4 cosecant times 3 times x minus pi over 2 plus 1. If we want to take a moment and figure out the domain and range, this is something that they might ask on an SAT. Domain range. Now for this problem, the range is actually going to be a little bit easier, so let's do that first. The range is a visual scan from low to high. This graph lives down low, and as we climb, it sort of peaks at negative 3. So I'm going to say negative infinity to, neg to negative 3, inclusive. Then there's this area here where the cosecant graph does, doesn't live at all, and then, but then it picks up again at 5, and it goes all the way to the top, which is infinity. The domain is a little bit challenging. The domain is everywhere with some exceptions. So I'm going to start by saying all reals except at, and the exceptions are going to be at the locations where there are asymptotes. And the asymptotes, luckily, are very evenly spaced. So what we're going to do is we're going to say at x equals, and we're going to name our first asymptote. Our first asymptote is at 3 pi over 6 or pi over 2. The next asymptote after that would happen if I added 2 pi over 6. On that 3 pi over 6, I add 2 pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. I add another 2 pi over 6, I'm at 7 pi over 6. So I'm going to add... 2 pi over 6 or pi over 3 n number of times. I might add it one time, I might add it two times, I might add it one, two, three times for the next asymptote, but I could also subtract it once or subtract it twice. So I'm going to use the stipulation that n could be any integer. So I'm going to say n is an element of 
the integers. N could be any integer, and this is the symbol for is an element of, and Z is the symbol for integers. So start with a home base asymptote, pi over 2, and then you're going to add as many times as you want pi over 3 to get to the next asymptote in either direction.